everyone, my name is Anand Gupta and I am here to talk in brief about the process of IC fabrication. This presentation is a result of an assignment provided to us as a part of the course of VLSI design. So let's quickly jump on to the main section. The entire process of IC fabrication can be divided into three steps or to be precise into three groups. The first one is wafer preparation, second one is wafer processing and the third is testing and packaging. The first step in the wafer preparation is the wafer crystal growth. Here silicon is melted into large containers and a, uh, and a small silicon seed which is already doped is dipped into the molten, uh, molten silicon. Due to the temperature difference uh, between the molten silicon and the silicon seed, the molten silicon eventually starts depositing on the surface of the silicon seed. This process is repeated repeatedly after, uh, until we get a large silicon crystal which is, uh, which is then called the silicon ingot. The silicon ingot is then sliced into thin shades which are known as the wafers. The image on the right shows the actual image of a silicon ingot and the wafers. The next step is wafer processing. This process is again subdivided into 5 steps that is chemical vapor deposition, oxidation, etching, photolithography and ion implantation. Chemical vapor deposition is a way of implementing epitaxial layer. The purpose is to grow thin layers of silicons over the wafer. For this, the wafer is placed into high temperature resistant tubes. From one end of the tube, highly reactive gases are pumped into the tube, and under high temperature, these gases react with the silicon. The wafer being cooler than the environment, the uh, silicon gets deposited onto the wafer. Hence, we obtain the epitaxial layer over the silicon wafer surface. The next step is oxidation. This step is used to grow a layer of silicon dioxide over the surface of the wafer. Oxidation can be either dry oxidation or wet oxidation. In dry oxidation, the oxidizing environment consists of pure oxygen, while in wet oxidation, the oxidizing environment consists of water vapors. The wafers are heated in high temperatures in the oxidizing environment, which leaves a layer of oxy um, silicon oxide on the surface of the wafers. The next step is etching. Etching is the process of removing the unwanted materials from the surface of the wafer. Etching again can either be dry or wet. The dry oxidation is called anisotropic while the wet oxidation is called isotropic. The effect of each variation is better depicted in the picture. The next step is called photolithography. This step is used to draw patterns on the wafer. Following the figure, we see that firstly we take the substrate with silicon dioxide grown over the surface of it. In the next step, photoresist material is grown over the silicon dioxide layer. In the third step, UV resist mask is placed over the photoresist. Then the wafer is exposed to the UV light. The area not protected by the mask and exposed to UV lights become soluble and can be washed away by the chemical by the chemical solutions. When this exposed silicon dioxide can be washed away by means of chemical solutions. In the next step, the remaining photoresist is also washed away, and thus we obtain the desired pattern over the, the silicon wafer. The last step is silicon implantation. Here we force impurity atoms to strike and penetrate into the uh, into the um, silicon wafer crystals. This is similar to doping which introduces impurity atoms to the crystal lattice structure of the wafer. In the later stages, metal contacts are made in the places needed and we obtain the desired IC. Thank you for bearing with me and have a good day.